who has the slowest epigenetic pace of aging? We can see that data here. This is the top 15 for the Rejuvenation Olympics. And if you notice, I'm not on the list. So with that in mind, what's my data? So I have 12 tests currently for Dunedin Pace. And to get on this test, to get on the leaderboard, you need an average of three Dunedin Pace measurements over six months. So my last test was in January of 2024. Six months prior would be June of 2023. Now, I don't have three tests over that time span. I have six tests. So I don't know how they'll rank that. But I think what makes the most sense is taking the average over that six-month period, which in my case is 0 0.81. 0.81 would put me at 14th place, which isn't bad, but the goal is obviously to move up. Now, there is hope for optimism as two of those six tests, two of the most recent six tests, were relatively lower, 0.75 and 0.74, which would put me into a tie for eighth place. So in order to more consistently see my best data, I need to know which factors are significantly correlated with Dunedin Pace. So let's start off with correlations for diet with Dunedin Pace. And for those who are unfamiliar with the approach, since 2015, I weighed all my food using a food scale. I then entered those daily food amounts into Chronometer. And if you want to track your own diet, there's a discount link for Chronometer in the video's description. And then I manually logged that data into a spreadsheet. So then each blood test has a corresponding average dietary intake. In other words, for a given 60-day period in between blood tests, because I'm tracking diet every day, I can take the 60-day average, which then lines up with the latter blood test. So every blood test has a corresponding average dietary intake. And then with many blood tests and many dietary intakes that correspond, I can calculate correlations. And after calculating correlations with the goal of improving uh, biomarkers, I follow or I try to follow as many of the significant correlations as possible with a p-value uh, less than 0 0.05 being the measure of statistical significance. All right, so with that in mind, I then looked at 97 comparisons for Dunedin Pace with foods, macro, and micronutrients, and this is a 12-test analysis. And we can see the da that data for what data is closest to the, being significantly associated with Dunedin Pace here. So on the left, we've got the food or nutrient. In the middle, we've got the correlation. And then on the right, we've got the p-value. And notice, though, that there are no foods or nutrients that are significantly correlated at a p-value less than 0.05 with Dunedin Pace as the best hit, the best correlation is vitamin B6 with a p-value of 0.1, which is outside of significance. So at this point, I have two options. One, just keep testing and gather more data, and I'm going to do that anyway, so that's not really an option. Or two, I decided to take a deeper dive. And this isn't the first time I've done this. I've done biomarker versus biomarker analyses before. But in order to get potentially gain more insight into mechanisms that may impact Dunedin Pace, I then decided to look at correlations for Dunedin Pace with other biomarkers. And we can see that full list here. Correlations for Dunedin Pace with other biomarkers. More specifically, 23 biomarkers that I commonly track, as shown here with the full list on the left. And then I, on the same day as Dunedin Pace testing, I also measured other bio, biomarkers versus venipuncture. So going to the lab and having them pull it, pull it out of my vein. And then when I got home, I did the uh, blood test, finger prick for Dunedin Pace. So I have nine to 11 tests that correspond for standard blood biomarkers on the same day of testing as Dunedin Pace. Almost all of the tests, as you can see with the N, which is the number of samples, Almost all of them are 11, so 11 tests that match up with Dunedin Pace with the exception of DHEA sulfate, which I currently have nine data points that overlap, and then aging.ai where I have 10, but aging.ai has been unfortunately discontinued, so that'll always be 10 unless that's uh, restored. And then again, in the middle, we've got the correlation and then the p-value. So now we've got four of these biomarkers that are significantly correlated with Dunedin Pace. The liver enzymes, AST plus ALT, platelets, but then where the story starts to get interesting, at least for me, is DHEA sulfate, which is significantly inversely correlated with Dunedin Pace. In other words, a relatively higher DHEA sulfate in my data is significantly correlated with a slower epigenetic pace of aging. And why that's interesting is because my DHEA sulfate is currently one of the weaknesses in my data. It's close to age expected and not youthful. I've had values that are uh, about two and a half times higher in my early 30s, and I just didn't track it for a very long time, and they declined over the past uh, 15 years or so. So getting them back to youthful levels without supplementation is a part of the one of the current goals. 
But then where the story gets most interesting, at least for me, is LDL. And there too is a significant inverse correlation. So let's take a deeper look at that correlation. So it's 11 tests for Dunedin Pace versus LDL. And then we can see with Dunedin Pace on the y-axis plotted against the LDL concentration on the x, we can see that significant inverse correlation for LDL against Dunedin Pace. In other words, relatively higher LDL in my data is significantly correlated with a slower epigenetic pace of aging. Conversely, lower LDL is significantly correlated with a faster epigenetic pace of aging. But note that these data, just to highlight the range in my case at this current uh, point in time, is from 62 to 83 milligrams per deciliter. I, I'm not trying to make any extrapolations for people who have LDL far higher. That's a story for a, a different day. Now also note that for one of these tests, high dose nicotinic acid, uh, on this, on the where I had a 0.98, which is my worst Dunedin pace yet to date. LDL on that date was 65. Now, in earlier videos, I've hypothesized that high dose niacin, 600 milligrams per day, may raise NED too high, and that may have been what messed up Dunedin pace, sending it to my worst value to date. But these data would suggest that maybe going, uh, maybe high dose niacin nicotinic acid reduces LDL to a level where it may be too low, negatively impacting the epigenetic pace of aging. So note that there are only two data points on the far left side of 65 milligrams per deciliter. So there is some extrapolation on this graph. So instead of testing that hypothesis by reducing my LDL as low as it can go and seeing if my Dunedin pace gets even worse. Conversely, I think testing the other side of that curve or the other side of that, that uh, slope. In other words, if I increase LDL, will I see my best Dunedin pace? I think that makes more sense. But what about coronary heart disease risk, right? If we increase LDL, wouldn't that increase heart disease risk? So let's take a look at what the data has to show. So on the y-axis, we've got the hazard ratio for coronary heart disease, CHD mortality, plotted against serum levels of LDL. And there are two main reasons why I like this study. First, it has a very large sample size. This is about 4.5 million people that were included in this study. And then second is that there are three curves. And as we'll see, the fully adjusted model included almost every comorbidity that could potentially impact the association for LDL with heart disease risk. And unfortunately, most studies, at least the ones that I've come across, don't adjust for all comorbidities that can impact that association. So it's somewhat part of the picture and not the full picture. Whereas I think this study is closer to the full picture. And for those who, who disagree, please leave a comment and we can debate that there. So in terms of what's significant, we put up our red line at a hazard ratio of one. Remember where the shaded region for any of these three colored lines is completely above one or completely above, below one, we have a significant association. So for the first model, model one, this is the minimally adjusted model in blue. They adjusted for age, sex, race, and smoking status. And just using an LDL of 120 as an example, that was significantly associated with a, about a 20% reduced heart disease mortality risk. But then when including statin use, BMI, hypertension, and diabetes into the model, that same 120 for LDL was now only associated with a 10% reduced risk of heart disease mortality risk. What about the fully adjusted model? So that's shown in green. As, and as I mentioned, they adjusted for basically every comorbidity that you can think of. In addition to removing the data for a two year lag. So people who died within the first two years was removed. So basically these are very sick people who died within two years. They didn't want that to skew their results. And then they also adjusted for HDL, pre-existing coronary artery, artery disease, atrial fibrillation, uh, pre-existing heart failure, stroke, anemia, liver disease, kidney disease, lung disease, cancer, depression, and dementia. In other words, almost every comorbidity that can impact the association for LDL with heart disease mortality risk. And when looking at the data for Model 3, now we can see that an, an LDL of 120 is not significantly associated with a reduced risk for heart disease mortality. In contrast, when LDL is greater than 120, that's associated with a significantly increased heart disease mortality risk. But that's only half the story. The other half of that story is when LDL was less than 65 milligrams per deciliter, that too was associated with an increased heart disease mortality risk. Now, if you remember the data on the right, high dose niacin reduced my LDL to 65 milligrams per deciliter, which is right on that edge of an increased heart disease mortality risk. 
So is it possible that in my case, for whatever reason, going too low for LDL may not be good for epigenetic, uh, the epigenetic pace of aging, but also potentially bad for heart disease mortality risk, at least based on what this published data shows. So with that in mind, there is a relatively safe range based on this plot for 65 to 120 for LDL being associated with lowest risk for heart disease mortality. So I do have room for improvement in my LDL, current LDL data to go a bit higher and to do it safely. So with that in mind, that's the goal for the next test, to raise LDL to greater than 85 milligrams per deciliter. I'm not talking about anything outrageous like 170, even just a small increase to 90 to 95. To do that, I've increased total fat intake, which is significantly correlated with LDL in my data. Those correlations are in the correlation tier on Patreon, so if you're interested in that, check it out. But even within total fat, where do you go from there? So subdividing that, saturated fat as expected, that's significantly correlated with LDL in my data, but that doesn't tell you from what. Also, coconut butter is significantly correlated, which is the major source of my saturated fat intake. So for the next test, I've increased coconut bitter, butter intake for the past week or so. So I'll have about two plus weeks of data with a relatively higher saturated fatty acid content from coconut butter. And we'll see if I can push my LDL just a bit higher to test this correlation with Dunedin Pace. Will it work? Test number two in 2024 is scheduled for March 4th. So that update video will be coming sometime in April. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. And before you go, we've got a whole, much, whole bunch of discount links that you may be interested in, including discount links for Dunedin Pace and epigenetic testing, oral microbiome composition, NAD quantification, at-home metabolomics, at-home blood testing with Cyfox Health, which includes ApoB, green tea, diet tracking with chronometer, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, buy me a coffee. We've also got merch. So if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Die Trying brand, as I've got on here, that link and all of the other links will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. Hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.